so this special Bible that we have today has just made its way to us from Poland and uh, when it leaves us uh, today it will be going into London and tomorrow to Dublin and from there to Holland, Greece and the Middle East. And so let us recommit ourselves to knowing God through his words and to spending time with his words each day. God bless you. It's an absolute blessing to carry this Bible because uh, many times when we are traveling on the plane, the captain is announcing that Ladies and gentlemen, there is a very special Bible traveling with us and asking us who are carrying the Bible to take it out of the bag and show it to people. And people are just coming and, and searching and uh, finding out what is their own language or what book is written on their own language in this Bible. And then wherever we go, actually the reception of this Bible is so positive. So we could take in the Nordic countries, in the Western countries, in the Central or Eastern European countries, this Bible is received very, very well. Today is the day when Follow the Bible, when the Travelling Bible is, is here in the UK. What's your reaction to, to a book like this, Travelling, passing through here? Actually, I'm pretty excited about it because I was there in Manila when this entire project was launched and I was looking forward to the day when it comes to the UK. In fact, we're using today to help our members remember that the Bible is central to our faith. Our faith is based upon what the Bible says. And so around the British Union today, in every church, there is supposed to be an emphasis on studying the Bible and what the Bible means to us individually and means to us as a church. And I'll be reading in Croatian. For the Newbold Church community, that we have the opportunity to have the Follow the Bible program with us here today, actually makes it possible for us to reaffirm our members' belief in the Bible as the Word of God, but also makes Bible reading a little bit more, I don't want to say inclusive, but bringing it more between the generation by having included our own family Bible that has been traveling around the church family since January. So it kind of brings the whole church together in focusing on what the Bible means in their personal lives as well as what it means to us as a church family. We uh, designed a, a whole series of sermons um, at the beginning of the year so that this would be a year where we get our people to again focus on uh, engaging with the Word of God and so we had four Sabbaths where we did that um, just getting people to uh, delve into God's Word and for that love for God's Word uh, that we've always had for that back again because you have been having this Bible emphasis you've taken follow the Bible quite seriously you've, you've got a, a family Bible tell me a little bit about that the family Bible is something that came out of the family worship committee where we thought if we have this follow the Bible that's traveling around the world coming just for one morning, why not use that as a whole year to try to focus back on Bible reading and seeing what Bible reading means to the different members. So the Bible has actually, we bought a little Bible with big margins that people could write their personal testimonies about what these Bible scriptures meant to them in their personal lives. And we have seen a revival of reading the Bible again, coming back to the Word of God in the book format here and just focusing on what does it mean today? Why is it still relevant for us as a church and for us as individuals believers? So when the parents have had the Bible at home writing their thoughts on their favorite Bible texts, the children have been encouraged to draw a picture of their favorite version of the Bible as in a story. And as you can see, uh, the children have been fantastic. Uh, we've got a variation of different uh, images, uh, even from as four years old. So we've had a great impact from the children. So the children are doing that while the adults are filling in, underlining and making comments about scripture texts. That's correct. You, you've had some exciting kind of comments there. What, how have you felt about what you've seen, what you've read? I have to say that Newbold being a big church that it is, 
sharing text in this way has brought about a, a closeness. It's brought about a community. We're a big church, and I found that when you've read what somebody is, what they've said, it's almost you you become closer to them. And I think there's been a greater link in that way. There was a, an example of someone who had uh, a disease. Uh, it was very life threatening, and they said how this text encouraged them. I didn't even know. But there was so much encouragement from just looking at what inspires certain people. And it's brought us together as a community. Lhe deu honra e glória. Ela ouviu a voz da Suprema Glória dizer: Este é meu filho querido que me dá muita alegria. Nous avons entendu cette voix venant du ciel lorsque nous étions avec lui sur la sainte montagne. Ndipo tinao mau achnene loka zikika koposa amene muchitabu inopo wa Samarila. Monga nyali yoni kila malo andima kufila kukacha nika ukantanda pa mitima yanu. Nani yori mo mazu kokoro ete hoshii no wa seisho no yogen wa nani hitotsu jibun katte ni kaishak su beki dewa nai to yukoto desu. Nikoli namreč nobena prerodba ni prišla po človeški volji, ampak so ljudje nošeni od svetega duha govorili v imenu duha. Hey, Linda Baldam, you're the associate librarian here. You love this Bible collection. Why is it so special to you? Well, it's just been really interesting looking on the internet, finding out information about the different Bibles, um, why they're so called, and then just find looking through the collection that we have here. Of course, all of this material is usually kept very safely in the library, so many people wouldn't even realise that we have it. That's not because we don't care about it. It's frankly because we do care about it so much and we have to look after it carefully. So... This is a great opportunity for us to show some of the exciting treasures that we have and that we look after very well. But why are they so important? I mean, surely the thing is to have a modern Bible today that I can read in my own language and understand it. Why, why is it important to have a collection like this? Well, from my own point of view, I do think it's, you're right, it's very important to have Bibles that people can read that are up to date, that make sense to them. I would say that's much more important in a way. But I think that just like the history of everything shows really where we've come from. I think you, you can go back and look at different volumes within the period that they were set. For instance, when you think of the, the Geneva Bible, it is quite funny that um, you have a Bible that uh, gets its name, the Bre Breaches Bible, from mistakes that are in it. But then when you realise why those mistakes were made, because they had to have printings abroad, because they were frightened that um, they would be discovered of doing something they shouldn't be so smuggling something in when you get when you get that kind of history and you see how valuable the bible was to people and how much they risked their lives for it i think those sort of things make you value something a little more so that's for me w would be why i think that they're important this is the treacle bible um, it's so named because there is a particular verse in jeremiah where it, uh, at least in the English version, we would normally talk about, is there a balm in Gilead? Well, in this particular version, it talks about, um, is there any treacle in uh, Gilead? In modern English, of course, treacle means something quite different. But in early modern English, uh, treacle, as it would have been pronounced, it actually means a cure-all, um, which kind of means the same thing as balm. But in this particular case, um, it's known as the Treacle Bible, principally because it says, there's, is there any treacle in Gilead? And of course, that's coming from the mid-16th century, so it's, it's very early. Yes. Interesting that they, uh, they almost give Jeremiah a nickname. Yes, they do. They call him of Jeremy here. Um, I'm not quite sure why we ended up with the ayers on the end, but uh, yes, certainly it's a, a shortened version. Well, the Geneva Bible is named that simply because it was printed in Geneva. Um, during uh, the, after Henry VIII's reign, of course, um, his daughter comes onto the throne and there is an exodus of Protestant scholars and Protestants in general from England into Geneva. And they take with them a certain amount of expertise about translation of the Bible and they decide that they are going to put together a Bible um, that everybody can read. And the Geneva Bible is named firstly because it's... Uh, well, obviously because it comes from Geneva. But it's uh, interesting because it's probably the first Bible that we have um, that is mass-produced, uh, mechanically mass-produced, um, and it comes with all sorts of study aids. It's, if you like, the very first study Bible, and it basically allows everybody to follow along uh, the text. It's written in a clear font, 
and it has uh, all sorts of study helps down the sides to help you understand what the text actually means. So this is a serious precursor to the King James or the authorised version? Essentially most of the King James version as we have in 1611 comes from this Bible. In fact this is, uh, a lot of this has been copied from uh, the Miles Coverdale um, Great Bible or the Treacle Bible beforehand. So yes, they tend to copy but it's all the same people working on it ultimately. And, and it moves forward and, and of course yes. this, this one that we've got right in front of us found in a second-hand bookshop. Yes, apparently this was found in a second-hand bookshop um, which uh, uh, is, is quite a, a rare find. Um, most people who are at least knowledgeable about books tend to take very good care of their books and know what they've got, as these are um, quite yeah. uh, So quite we've got rare. the one copy here that's, that's yes. been restored, we have and then a, we've got another copy that um, is in need. Yes, this is the, if like, the real, really, really old version. Um, it does need a, a certain amount of repair, but we have this uh, quite well-restored version. The Baskerville Bible, that sounds like something from Sherlock Holmes. It certainly does. The Baskerville Bible is uh, so named because of the, the printer, John Baskerville, um, decided that he was going to come up with a different kind of font um, for uh, printing his Bible. And uh, he named it after himself, obviously, and printed this uh, Bible. And as you can see from it, it's in very clear text. It's well-spaced. Um, and it's a very easy to read Bible. So if you've got this on a lectern in a dark and dingy church with one candle illuminating it, you can still read it. Exactly. And possibly it would have been printed for precisely that, for work in a church, as opposed to perhaps um, Bibles in your home. Um, of course, it's a much later Bible um, than the others. It's sort of, I think, in the 1700s, but um, it's, it's still probably made for churches. So we're, we're moving forward in history now and yes. we're in Victorian times. We're in Victorian times and the Victorians had, um, well, they, they tended to like their Bibles as good Christians should and took a lot of care in decorating and the preserving of them. And here we have a, a very good example here um, where they have actually um, clasped the Bible. And in fact, a lot of early Bibles were originally clasped as well. Um, uh, they've put uh, metal edges on it to stop the, the, the edges from being uh, worn and torn. This is known as a thumb Bible. Um, this is quite possibly the smallest um, size Bible that you'll ever get your fingers on, if you can possibly get your fingers this into it. This is the it. complete Bible. Um, uh, from, what we can, from, what I, uh, from what I can tell, yes, this is actually a complete Bible. Um, the font is so incredibly small, um, I, it's, you'll need a, a couple of magnifying glasses to read Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But um, uh, I don't think these were necessarily produced for uh, real proper study, they're more of a, a curio than little, a little gimmick. Than a, a, yes, more of a gimmicky Bible than actually anything else. Do you see the the travelling Bible that's passing through here today as, as another kind of the, the other end of this gimmick? Uh, what, what what value do you see in that? Well, I think in one respect it gives us a sense of history. We are, a, I suppose, a global church, and in the same way that the Victorians would uh, keep uh, track of all their Bibles and everybody who, who um, in their family, this, I suppose, is uh, another way of keeping track of the Adventist family, so to speak. Wow.